Electra was directed by Rob Bowman and came out in January 2005. The film once again stars Jennifer Garner, a spinoff of her role in Ben Affleck's Daredevil that had come out just two years prior. And in this film, Electra finds herself protecting a family that she was originally contracted to kill from the hand. They want this girl and her father dead, and Elektra is the only one standing in their way. So like I've been doing this year with Mulan and the James Bond movies, I decided to review Elektra because Black Widow was originally going to come out this weekend. So I sat down to watch the movie for the first time in 15 years. I haven't seen it since it came out, with the hopes of making it a hilariosity but I hadn't watched the movie in a very long time, and so I decided to watch the director's cut because I hadn't seen it. I wanted to see if it changed anything. The Daredevil director's cut is significantly different. It adds a lot of deleted scenes and changes the movie's tone a bit, but I still find the movie aggressively silly, and I don't really like it that much. Obviously, if you saw the title of this video, I decided not to make a hilariosity out of Elektra because I just don't really think it warrants inclusion in that segment. This movie isn't hilariously bad. It doesn't have a lot of laugh out loud moments that are embarrassing. And I don't find this movie horrendously terrible like some other comic book adaptations of the mid 2000s. I just think this is a below average, mediocre movie that could have been a lot better. In 2005, I absolutely hated this movie. I hadn't seen the movie in 15 years. I thought it was horrible. It was strange to watch the movie today. Because in 05, this was coming out right after X-Men and X-Men 2, Spider-Man, Spider-Man 2. These giant comic book movies that were really successful and that I loved. Elektra felt very small scale to me. And it was. The budget was only like $43 million. And they also didn't have a lot of time to shoot this movie. They were working around Jennifer Gardner's schedule with her TV show Alias. Rob Bowman has talked a lot about that in the coming years whenever he's asked about this movie. They just didn't really have a lot of time to shoot this film. They rushed it. And that's why he made a director's cut. And he talked about how the studio actually gave him complete control over that cut. They had no supervision. He could do whatever he wanted. So he included some deleted scenes. He extended some shots. There's a tonal shift in some ways in the movie. And it is a slight improvement over that theatrical cut. But the movie is still rather uneventful. And that's how I felt in 2005. And it was strange coming off of those big Spider-Man movies and X-Men movies and, and, and seeing a movie that felt so small scale. Watching the film 15 years later, having seen the way comic book movies have flourished ever since, strangely, the small scale element of Elektra no longer turns me off. It's actually kind of refreshing. Don't get me wrong, I have no love for this movie, but it is a film that has more merit than I think it's often credited for. This movie is commonly found in lists with the worst comic book movies of all time. It's often compared to Halle Berry's Catwoman, which I think is genuinely hilariosity worthy. That's a movie about uh, Catwoman up against a fucking makeup conglomerate. <laughs> Electra being contracted to kill a father and his young daughter and feeling conflicted about that because she's gotten to know them over the first act is interesting. I like that we get to watch her deal with that conflict and go against her instincts. The action sequences are mostly fine, although they get unnecessarily cheesy when members of the hand that she kills just kind of vaporize into mist because dead bodies are bad for a PG-13 movie. Children will leave the theater if they see a dead body. They have to fade away like in GoldenEye 64. <laughs> and Rob Bowman, for the most part, helms the movie efficiently. It's good enough for the time frame he was working with. I'm actually a fan of him. He directed some of the best X-Files episodes, as well as the first X-Files movie, which I still think is pretty good. And uh, Rain of Fire, starring Matthew McConaughey and uh, Christian Bale. I always call it Rain of Fire because that's how Matthew McConaughey would say it. The real issue I have with this movie is how uneventful so much of it feels. There is an opening action sequence with a really ludicrous shot where Elektra is revealed and wind seems to be blowing at her from eight different angles even though she's indoors. This cold open was necessary to set up what she does. Jason Isaacs is basically used as an exposition factory to give us a lot of information about how she's kind of a myth or an urban legend and people are terrified of her. But after that, there's a 30 minute period where Elektra is getting to know this family and it just feels so boring. Nothing's really happening. And Jennifer Garner's portrayal of Electra is unnecessarily stoic, and it's a little hard to figure out what's going on with her. We get some flashbacks that explain a few things, but even those flashbacks are also a little confusing. Terrence Stamp, as Stick, kicks her out of his dojo, 
And we're like, why? What the fuck did she do? And we recognize that she doesn't really even know what the problem is. And there's not a lot of resolution for that in the movie, even though there's a conversation later in the film where Styx says, actually, I've been testing you this whole time. Didn't you know? It's just a weird turn of events. The characterization in the movie feels very rushed. But my biggest issue with this movie by far is its third act that just appears out of nowhere. Elektra demonstrates the ability of foresight throughout the movie, and it's rarely explained or delved into. If you don't know anything about these characters, they do a really poor job of explaining why they have powers and what their abilities are. They all just kind of have magical things they do, and we're just supposed to accept it. Electra has a telepathic conversation with the man that she learns killed her mother when she was a little kid, and they just meet up at her old house, and they all have a big battle. It's extremely abrupt. It's a weird shift. It happens so quickly that it's hard to get invested in it. Electra shows up at this house. They all have a big fight, and she saves the little girl who is suddenly demonstrating that she has powers and abilities of her own. She has a weird little lasso of truth thing that she's spinning around, and forgive me for not knowing what the fuck this is, because I don't read the Elektra comics. Again, as someone who doesn't read these comics, a lot of this just doesn't make sense. Everything about the last half of this movie feels very rushed, and everything about the first half feels too slow. All that being said, I really don't think this is a movie that deserves to be compared to Catwoman. It's nowhere near as bad or embarrassing as that movie. It's just a kind of boring, mediocre film that could have been a lot better. You can tell they were attempting to make a far more serious and less silly movie after 2003's Daredevil, which is really absurd and kind of hilarious if you watch it today. You're holding back. Yes. Don't. And I give them credit for that, and I like the fact that the movie feels more small-scale than some of these bigger superhero films we see today, but unfortunately the final product feels so below average that it doesn't really matter, but you can see hints of a much better movie, especially in the director's cut, that they just couldn't achieve in their final version. I'm gonna give Elektra a C-. Like I said, in good faith, I couldn't make a hilariosity out of this. There's just not enough there for that segment. But in the case of Marvel's first attempt at a female-led superhero film, this one didn't go too well. I do admire what they were trying to do, but it just didn't work out. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. Look forward to more reviews very soon. One day I would like to review Daredevil, Ben Affleck's movie. That'll be a lot of fun and a lot of evanescence. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. Look forward to more reviews very soon. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.